Hi guys, welcome back. Right, I'm gonna be doing a, a cowboy hat today. Um, two reasons. One, someone did ask me about doing a cowboy hat with carbide. And I've got a video for that, because I've done that. It's not up there, I'm just pointing out there because everyone does that. But I've got a video for that, because I've already done one, but it was on a piece of you. Because I also had another question, which was uh, using carbide for wet wood. So I'm going to turn a cowboy hat out of this eucalyptus. So, because yes, you can turn uh, wet wood with the carbide. What, what the, what the hell are you looking for? Engines. Engines. You've been watching Calamity Jane again. Yeah. Because I'm turning a cowboy hat. Yeah. Come round here. Sorry, guys. I just got back from the windy city. Oh, did you? And, and what are you doing with that? I'm going to keep a lookout. Are you? Yeah. Well, you can whip crack away your butt round there and keep a lookout round there, can't you? I do apologise, guys. And any singing, I'm sorry. Right. The only engines you're going to find are the big engine coming in the big van to take you away, girl. That's what's going to happen. I'll take you back to the, I'll take you back to the Black Roads, don't worry. You can be back to your father. <laughs> right. Okay, guys. Right. Let's get serious. Fun's over. Well, no, it's not actually, because it's all fun. We only have fun. That's all we're here for. Right. I've put a worm screw in, and I've I've just done with a compass, so I've got my centre, so I know roughly what circle I can get, okay? And that just centres it up. I'll just put a compass on there, do a circle, and then that's where it's going to be centred. So I'm going to mount this on my worm screw, and what we're going to do... Is we're just going to turn this with with some carbide. It'll mostly be the ones from the set of three, but I will be using probably the R2 cutter. So I've tightened it. Now I'm going to undo it a bit, and then I'm going to tighten it again because, and that's it. That's tight. As soon as it's on that that chucking tight, I'm not. Don't wrench it up because if you do that, when you turn it down nice and thin, it's you're not going to get the. You're not going to get it off. You can't get hold of that rim and, and tug it round, so you don't want it too tight. Okay, right. I'm going to bring a step centre up for now because that's only on a, a, a worm screw. And like I say, I'm just going to do it with some some carbides. Okay, a cowboy wet cowboy hat. Now I've not turned, and I, this is perfectly honest. I have not turned a wet cowboy hat. With, car with just carbide, okay? I normally always turn my cowboy hats with um, pretty much spindle gouge for the majority of it, 90% of it is done with a spindle gouge. Um, I love turning cowboy hats, it's what I love doing, it's just, at least always seems to go a bit calamity <laughs> on me. She is a calamity, that's what she is. <laughs> you wanna hear her when she's pay do her doing her gonks, her cowboy gonks. She says, that's all I've got is cowboy singing in the background all the time. Right, okay, I'm gonna get myself sorted, get my mask on. You all right now? You yeah. Dodging those arrows, are you? Yeah, I'm keeping the look out. Bloody neighbours are gonna be terrified to come home now, aren't they? <laughs> I think they're gonna get shot. Right, okay, so, I'm gonna turn my speed down a little bit. Um, I'm going to start off with um, the 14mm square, but I've got the R2 cutter, okay? So it's your 14mm square chisel from your set, but it's got an R2 cutter on it, okay? Don't need the 15. You're talking difference between 14 and 15, really, literally half a mil um, either side of the cut, so it, it don't really make a lot of difference on it. Um, the 14's man enough to do this. So right, get me uh give me head headgear on and we'll start turning it down. We'll just rough it down a little bit, okay? Alright, let's step to the side, let it spin up. Right, that's not too bad. Get a little bit more speed on it if we can. Right, I'm gonna start out of that. And then I can get, once I get a little few cuts, I can get the speed up a little bit, okay? So I'm just going to gently come in at the bottom here. Right, 
there's the smell yeah, and I've got the water nice. getting these shavings come off but I'm getting a little bit of water on me <laughs> Bits, yeah, little chunks flying off. <laughs> up there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a bit of bark there. A little bit of bark come off. That's why I like to stay stay on this end. Just to rough it, roughly get there, or to get this bit to round on the end. going to take a massive chunk off look you get lovely these all of these ribbons coming off it's fun turning wet wood even with carbide a little bit low actually I thought I was you come up a little bit you don't want to be low okay better be high than low Yeah, that's better. Nearly round. I just want to get that bark gone because then that gives me Let's me know the diameter of the hat I can turn. Nice and smooth. Bring this down a little bit. I'm going to have to round chisel soon. Pretty much, in, in, well, probably be going down to it pretty much now, really. Just going to get thinner on here. Stop that to have a look. Get that crud off of there. Right, it's gonna have some lovely colours in it. Right, we are perfectly round here. Now I'm gonna leave this fairly thick because I, I want to actually take this down on this side a bit when I've turned it round. So we're doing alright there, that's not bad. That should move quite well. Right, everything's getting a bit a bit wet. <laughs> that's uh very wet right okay so you've got to be careful don't go running your fingers across it because remember it is a very sharp carbide so i'm just giving it a little little wipe like that i should spray all these up with wd later yeah at least i won't be able to reach it so i can't get her to get it for me right i'm going over to the round chisel for now the 12 mil round start to get some uh start to get a bit of shape to it this bit I'll probably end up going over to a nine mil because I've got to get this curve in here um, but we'll see we'll see what we can do well I can turn the speed up a bit now
Got a bit of bad scent, I want to just come down a little bit. Yeah, I'm pretty much on centre there. But because I've got the chisel angle down, I'm cutting above centre. And to cut out of here, as you see, I'm just dropping the handle. Yeah, I'm pretty much dead on centre. Right, I want to get my rim to go in a little bit there. But that's bark on the top, so I've got to look at where how deep this hat's going to be. Probably a bit hard for you to see that angle of that, but you know, I'm doing, don't, don't just put if you just pull out with it flat, you're going to get a lot of tear out. It's going to because it's wet wood as well, so you're going to get a lot of tear out if you do that. The trick here is to ride the bevel and do it that way. Right, I want to get my tenon put on here first. Okay, so right, the easiest way for me to do that is to take this out. So I'm on a worm screw. So I'm going to take that off, I'm going to just use the square. And this is the square chisel, not the R2. That's all bark there. And this is not the top of the hat, this is just the tenon, this will be turned away. Now I've got to work out how big I want I'm going to have to take some of that down a little bit first. I don't want the hat as wide as that at the top there. Let me just check that centre now. Yeah, I'm pretty much dead on centre there. Well, I'm looking at the rim and see, just seeing how We'll take a bit of that tenon away so I don't want to have to pull this out of the top. Yeah, I want it about there. Right, okay, so I can make this my turn and now up here. So this is what I was saying about with doing the tenons, you can do it with your square carbide. You could just come in with a flat, roll it over. Right, 
So a little bit deeper because I want a good enough tenon to hold on to. And that's all you've got to do. The handle slightly raised, so it's slightly lowered. Come in, so you're there. Roll it and cut in. This back fast, perfect tenon every time. Okay? Dovetailed as well. So that's, that's how you do it with the square. But that's a little bit more advanced, so for Lisa it's better to do it the other way. Right, now what I want to do, I'm going to stay, take this... Actually no, I'm going to leave that in, that, that give me a mark. I just want to make sure I get a mark on the hat because it, it helps me for when I've got to turn it around. Yeah, that's giving me the little circle, right. So just putting that there for the support, stop there's any vibration. Round carbide again. Nice gentle cut, nice clean up cut please. Now I can see that's going to be the top of my hat so yeah I'm getting a little bit of a curve in here just a little bit not too much but enough if you get a curve in here it helps it to curl that's getting your right angle here because you want to be on the bevel handle drop right down tool handle uh, tool rest is just getting in the way a little bit there we go so we come round we come in we're on our bevel, we've rolled it so we're on our bevel and we're just working our way out like that. Dropping our handle, okay, that way we get a nice clean finish. There we go. Right. I don't think that's too bad. Let me have a look and see what the see what it's like, what the finish is like. Well that's not too bad. This is this is ringing wet this wood, so not ringing ringing wet, but it is very wet. I'm getting wet on me. Okay. It's very very wet there. Very wet. So as that gets thinner and dries out, that's when I'll do the sanding. You can't get that perfect finish on it because it, it's wet wood, it won't do it. Right, I'm happy with that. I'm going to turn that round. And I'm going to do a bit of the following on the other side. Get the help, hold that in a chuck. Okay. I'm going to pop that out. There. And what I want to do is I'm going to... Because I've got... There's, there's a little bit of the piff that's running through here, okay? And it's got a very little crack there. That's why I've, I've left it that thick, because I want to take this down thin now on this side, okay? So I'm going to change the chuck because that's not going to hold in this... Uh, <coughs> I'm not going to hold that in this chuck. Found any engines yet, darling? Not yet. Not yet. No, you keep a look out. Yeah. You know then they hide in the shadows and creep up on you. Yeah. Up in them black hills. So you guys think it's bad keeping your kids entertained when they're off school? I've got one all the time. <laughs> keep entertained. <laughs> Right, there we go, everything's held dead centre, look at that, nice and straight, nothing, so it's all, all nice and central, so that's good. All central. Right. So we're going to take that out. Don't forget, tight, quarter, that's all we need. Right, what I'm going to do for the moment, before I start up again, I'm just going to get a... A mark here which is going to be where this is on my hat, the rim of my hat. 
I'm going to come in a bit from that. Okay, that's that's basically where I'm going to be. Turn it. It's going to be filler, but I'm I'm giving myself a bit of a a bit of leeway there. I'll put that back up there for now, so I need it. Right, I'm just going to take this this down now. Now, don't be tempted to think just push in with a square because that won't do you no good. Right, little tiny bit high. You really want to be pretty much dead on centre with this, like that. But we'll be cutting up above centre when we're cutting. Okay? Right, oh, let's, let me move this towel stock out of the way. Put that on the board. Start her up. Everything's running through. Everything's nice. Okay. Right. I've got quite a bit to take down here. Nice slow cut. No scraping, we're nice and flat. We're uh, nice on our bevel there. We're just coming in, our bevel's in contact. We've rolled over, handles down. Nice shavings. So now because we're going that way we've got to bring our handle round here so we can start here but we've got to bring our handle round. Push cut. Get a measurement in a minute. It's starting to get a bit thinner there. So yeah, handles down, okay. And we're we're cutting above. You can see where centre is. Centre's down here. I'm actually cutting up here. So I'm on the bevel. Handle. Chisel's got to be pointing in the direction you're going, okay. And we're running the bevel across. Right, and we're going to start working on this rim here, out here. Now as we get thinner, you've got to have your finger just behind it. Now don't worry about when you come off. Remember, the tool's not moving, it's only the wood moving. So if you come off of here and you happen to catch your finger, everything just stops. So you can't do nothing, okay? Because your finger's not moving and the chisel's not moving. It's only the wood. Right, we're quite thin there, so that's nice. I like to cut my cowboy hats by coming from the centre out. I don't like going from here in. A lot of people will turn from here and go in. I don't like to do that. When you get that fin out here, you can't pick up your cut because it, it moves. But if you go from that way out, it won't move.
We'll get a light behind us in a minute so we see how thin we are. Right, I just want to know where my where my hole is, if you like. <laughs> you know, somehow I knew Lisa was going to laugh when I said that. Right, that's where I'm going to start hollowing in from. Roll your chisel over slightly. It's not going to be 45, just a little bit. And you can come in on the back cut like that. Give you life, give you lovely shavings like this, look. Shavings, not scrapings. If they're scrapes, a scrape will be scrunched. A shave, a cut will be open like that. A cut will be nice and long, okay? If that's a scrape, it won't be like that. That's, that's scraping, okay? So if we come here, look. Looks good, but I can get them. So this is what this is what well we see it's dust we're getting from scraping. Okay, we want this. We want long strands like that. Okay, that's cut. That means it's it's not scraping it. That means it's cutting the wood, and that's what we want. Okay, there's the difference straight away. You see it come off there. Look. There's a difference, okay? That's the difference between scraping and cutting. Scraping, you'll get all that powdery stuff like this, okay? And cutting, you'll get nice strands. Now I'm gonna be, I'm a bit high now. As I'm going into up the centre, it becomes just under a bit high. There, I'm on centre now. Got to get some of this out of the way. When you do that back cut like that, like I said, Jesse, you've got to stay in control of your chisel all the time because it will try to run away from you if you don't control it. Okay, it's a quite an advanced cut really to do with carbide um, because you've got your, your handles down, okay, and you're you're riding it backwards on the bevel, so you're getting a you're getting it to cut backwards like this. So, because you'll get these lovely long ribbons like that, okay? That's, you'll know when you're doing it right, because that's what you'll get. Right, okay, let me um, get back to what I was doing. And we're going to put a light on. Actually, I might see if I can do it this side. Okay, a bit in the chuck. No, nope, it's gonna bend up. Come on. That's not too bad. Let me just turn it a little bit. There we go. That's alright, I can see there. You can also see if you've got any lines as well. Now we're quite thin there, so we're all right. I've got to get rid of this bit here. Still wrong because of the way it is there. Now I just see the light coming through.
See, this is using it to cut backwards. I can't do it that way. As I come in, that cut us up. It's going to catch, okay? You don't need to try it to know. Believe me, it will catch. But we can do it going backwards the other way. Probably going to have to change chisels in a minute. I'm going to have to be careful with my depth because I've got to remember how far up I can go. I have a tendency to get carried away. Pin up there now as well. I'm going to bring another light in. See if it shows me better on this side. Not really. So I'll leave this one here. So I might have to turn that off in a minute so I can see what I'm doing. So I've got to get this. I've got to start seeing up here. I've got to get this here. bit of thickness on that side there so I'm going to get that away now it's getting a bit steep now so I'm losing my right, I'm going to have to have a little measure with the calipers uh, see what I've actually got there these ones are the best ones because they show me the thickness up here Right, plenty up that top. I'm coming down as I get to this rim. I've got about four mil at the moment. Oh, that's about. We've got just over a mil on that. Yeah. I'm down to about one mil there. This bit here is about one mil, okay? And here I'm about a mil and a half. I want to take a little bit more just from here. But no more from out here. That's going to be okay, that. So I want to take a little bit from this shoulder. And obviously I've got plenty more thickness up there to get rid of yet. But I'm going to have to change over chisels now. I'm pretty much done with the 12mm, I think. I could probably get a little bit more on here. Let me turn that light off. So I can just see here. I've got this.
Ну, посолю, да? It's getting pretty much even colour there. Okay, I'm going to go over to another chisel now. And I'm going to use this just a, a standard type 3 the detail chisel, okay? Because this I can come in here on the bevel. I get a nice and thin run there then. Tiny bit there, I can just see from here. Yeah, that gets us round there. Now we can work up on the inside now, see. We're definitely thin enough around that bit. Pretty delicate work. A little line there. Right, let's go over to a different um what do I want here? I think I want a nine mil really. I think I want the nine mil so I can get in there. Go that cleaned it up. Nice little push back cut. We've got a nice fin there. Look, you can see how thin we've gone. Got a bit more to go on the deck there. So we keep it nice and clean. Keep everything clean. You don't want to put no torn bits in it because it won't be easy to get out. If you get bad tear out when it's this thin, you ain't going to be able to get it out. So learn to be able to back cut. 
And you can only do that obviously with carbide, try and do it with other chisels, it won't work. Well, I've not, not tried to, I've not had a need to. But, right, I've got, if you just build there, there's a little ridge there. That should be gone. Do enough, do a little bit, I can feel it there. There, it's gone. I'm having to watch it there and cut it there so you can't see where you're coming in with your cutter. That's it. Right, we're going to have to get a uh, more accurate measurement for the for the depth because obviously I've got to take the tenon off the other side yet. Yeah? Come on, get in there. That's it. Yeah, it's just that that's catching there. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm there. That's it. I don't want to go any more than that. Mm. Don't want to go any deeper than that. Time I take that tenon off. I want to put the little dip in the top as well. So we're doing good, guys. And it's the uh, same. It's all been done with carbide. Look at that. That's not had no sandpaper on it yet. We've got beautiful finish there. Okay. Got a nice finish up in here. Just got to check this thickness up this top end here. Right. All right, all down here, we're about a mil and a half all, all the way down here. I've just got a little bulbous bit in that very, very top. It's that, just that bit there, that very, very top bit. But I've got to be careful. It looks like there might be a slight, no, that's just a pattern. It's not a crack. <laughs> okay. Very careful because of that, that top bit up there. So I'm going to start her up. Let's see, I think it's going to be a job for the detail chisel. Yep, there's a little bump there. where it is, just there, it's only a little bit. So, I'm going to bevel back to the bit that doesn't need cut in and then come into the bit that doesn't need cut in. And there we go, I'm going to cut that button. Right, that is really thin on this side here, so I don't, definitely don't take no more that away. I can just feel this slight bump there. Right there. Oh God, I've just got to check this. It's this slight bump there. Where it comes up. And there it's thinner, so... I can't afford to get rid of that. That's got it. 
One more little pass and we'll be good. Or we'll go through. There we go. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm going to use this actually to just come across this bottom a little bit. Like so. Lovely clean button there. Nice and clean. Right, I've just got that tiniest little nibble and I'm going to just take that off of this one. That's it. Get that to go a bit more rounded in that corner. In the field. Yep, that feels alright. Let's get rid of that there. Well, I think that is okay, guys. A bit of sanding, and that should come up all right. Now, I already know I'm thin enough, and I'm playing about, and you know what's going to happen, didn't you? I've got to put a bit more pressure on that. Right, I'm leaving that at that. I'm going to put these, uh, these tools up for a minute. Right, hang on, I'm going to put that back there. Right, that's it. 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 Sorry if this has been a little bit long-winded, guys. Can't really do a lot with the sanding on this because it's, it's ringing wet. Well, it's not ringing wet, but it's wet. If you know what I mean. They're cogging the paper straight away. Build up a bit of heat when you're doing this, so it dries it out. It's starting to dry. I can see this is starting to move already. Bit 
on that edge there. Yep, we're good. We're good to go. Well, I say this will be submerged in water, so. Well, I've got to sort out chucking it up now to take the bottom off. It's going to look nice, isn't it? Because look at the look at the colouring. Yeah, in it. that is that, that's actually starting to go even <laughs> now without putting in water. But I will put the bands over that and put it in water, and that will will get it to to move. So we're at that stage at the moment, guys. There. And that you can see, I haven't done a lot of sanding. This is it's all done with carbide at the moment, just carbide. Okay, I mean, pretty much, I suppose, what 80% of that's just been done with a 12 mil round carbide. Mm -hmm. So, yes, you can do it with carbide, and yes, you can turn wet wood with carbide very easily. It's just getting your angle right the way that the cutting edge of that cutter has to come in contact with that wood what makes the difference so now we're going to get this on the on a jam chuck so we're going for these big jaws here and we're going to be able to set up our light system so mm -hmm. it shouldn't take me too long to set this up guys it's only a few components right okay as you know I've got my right here, sits inside my chuck, like so. That wire goes in the end of there, like that. This comes down, I have a plug ready for this down here, like so. There we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice bit of light. Now, what we do is, sorry. This comes on. I think this is actually might have moved slightly. This this piece of wood, um, it's been hollowed out in it. Just moved slightly. It's got a very slight movement to it. See, but it doesn't really matter because once the hat's put on, I will level the hat up to it. So let me just push it back, nice. Right, that's it, that's not so, too bad, yeah. that's not too bad. And the light sits up inside and see, when that spins, it can't do nothing, it won't twist, it won't wrap the light round or nothing like that, it, it, the light spins inside it. And then what I do is I have the mole grips, which just clip on the end of the rod that comes out the back, where the light comes out the back, okay? And that, when that's spinning, that stops that from flipping or doing anything, uh, silly mm -hmm. and then we have our light like that now we just got to mount our hat on here like this and then we just turn it down turn that little bit off now um, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah I just want a little piece of this Right, just a little bit of router matting. But, now the thing here is, you you actually need to cut that bit out because Definitely. you want the light to shine through it. <laughs> I'm got, I, I wanna make one put foam grips over it actually, so it mm -hmm. works a bit better. Can you grab the scissors from down there please, Diane? Mm -hmm. This is just to give a, a little bit of friction to it. And then the towel center comes up on our little dot there, that's why we put it back so we can keep our mark there. If you don't take this hole out, what you'll get is you'll get a honeycomb. <laughs> you get a honeycomb pattern on on the hat. There we go. See, and that sits on it. I won't be turning it like that, obviously. I will bring. Have to bring a towel it up and then we just get it down to that little nibble and then take that little nibble off okay the light is so that you don't go through the top of your hat you know if you leave the hat 
top of the hat too thick, when you um, when it's drying out, it won't the top of the hat. You want it to come in, so you want it to go inwards a little bit, like Lisa's <laughs> hat did. You know what am I looking for? Ah, uh, oh, I know thingy. one of these pointy twirly things. Simple, yeah. Right, that's what I was looking for. Thank you. Sitting all quiet there at the back watching me, and you, you knew what I wanted. I wasn't saying you, wasn't you? <laughs> right, that's it. That tiny little bit, look, that can still move, okay? But that is enough to just hold that like that. And being it's not wood on wood, it shouldn't screw. The other one was like a bit squealy. Mm -hmm. um, this won't screw because it's got the router mat in, which helps keep it a bit quiet. Right, so we're going to get our towel stock up. And as I say, because we're doing carbide, we're going to take this out with carbide, obviously. And this is going to be taken out with the detail chisel, okay? It's remember, detail chisel can do so much. It's not just for Christmas. It's yeah. <laughs> a detail chisel is not just for Christmas, right? Okay. So everything should be secure. That shouldn't go anywhere, right? I'm going to give it a little spin, and then I'm going to start it. Right, we're okay. Everything seems okay. Now we're going to turn our light on. There we go, and now I'm going to turn this down, and I shall see that. As I get down to there, I should t turn the outside light off. Let's just have a look now. Yeah, so I can see where it where it is. I'll have to turn that off when I get down to the end of it. Turn this off guys, I really want to see, I don't want to go through. You can see where that is now, the pink bit.
Stop. It's all right, it's holding it, it's holding it, it's holding it. Oh, look, I made a little mark. It's all right, that'll come off. I just got to that last little bit. That was very lucky. But we saved it. We didn't do no damage. Um, that's it, we're all off. Turn that light off. We didn't do no damage. Okay, we just got a tiniest little dot there. That was, that was very lucky. That was that centre point. I, went, I just went for that one more little, little go and that was it. Yeah, that's thin enough on the top there. I could have gone a tiny little bit more, but we're done. That's good. I'm happy with that. Yeah. Oh, look at that. All those shapes. Oh, oh my god. Look at that, guys. Or at least I let that happen to my coffee. I'll let it happen. Yeah. Oh, look. <laughs> oh, that, look. That's. Oh, oh well. It, that's, actually, if you drink it, because it's eucalyptus, so. Well, that's off. If I soak it through my teeth. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> that don't actually. Eucalyptus don't yeah. actually taste that nice. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, yeah. Right, my little skew. I've got my <laughs> here, my super duper. Just on that centre bit. Right. There we go, guys. Okay. Nice and thin. That's really, look at that's that. That's one mil, you said. Yeah, that's only less, one millimetre thin that, yeah. there. That's one millimetre. I've got a one and a half mil going up the side, and I'm probably, I probably could have gone slightly thinner. I'm probably two mil on the actual top, but you could see the actual. You can see the red coming through there, isn't it? You could see the light, light coming through. It's a little bit deceiving because I've got this. Because I've got this bit of dark grain here, it was a bit deceiving to see that completely for me. Yeah. But no, we're we're fairly even yeah. colour because we've got the same red down on the side as we have there. So I'm about I'm about right. Yeah, that's that's good. That should that will kill. That will pull in. This will all pull inwards, and this will kill right over. Yeah. That is going to be one beautiful cowboy hat. That's that it. is going to be a real. That's going to really curl. Yeah. I've got a feeling that's going to come right over. That's going to be that's a real hilly, be hillbilly that. one. <laughs> it don't feel it at the moment. Now, the last one I did, I did submerge it in, hot, I said, hot water because I didn't think yeah. it was going to bend. And then when I took it out, it had a bit of curl and I thought, yeah, that's all right. It's not too bad. Well, then as it dried, whoa, it, it, really it came curled, in, yeah. it done this, it done that, it moved in all directions. So And it wrinkled as well, didn't it? Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to see what I do. I'm probably just going to put the bands over this and just leave it. I'll, put, oh, I'll say that. I'll probably submerge it more because I, I like to. Yeah. If you put it in water, it does help to stop it from cracking as mm. it's moving. Okay? If you just put the bands on, it will still move dry. Snap. But there's a chance, it won't snap, it, yeah. there's a chance you might get a crack or a split in it somewhere. Mm. Where if you submerge it in water, let it do its sort of moving, then take it out, then leave it to dry. It doesn't, so I've, it's what I've found personally yeah. with the woods up it. But that, that's beautiful, look at that, that yeah. is going to be beautiful. That's nice, right? I'm not putting finish on this, I've got to mustn't get it dirty. Yeah. It'll go in the water, and then when it comes out, because it's been in the water, it ends up like actual leather. Yeah. It feels like the leather, like a proper cowboy hat, a real cowboy hat. So, very nice. There you go, guys. So, mm -hmm. can you do it with carbide? Most certainly, definitely, 100%. Yes, you can, and it's a lot of fun to do. Yeah. Uh, can carbide do wet wood? Yes, 100%, definitely, do wet wood. Will you have to start sanding with 60-grit paper? Absolutely not. No <laughs> way in your life. 
That had a tickle with some 180 grit. That was it. And that finished, guys. Look, go on, touch it. Go on. Touch it. Touch it. Not you. Get out of here, bloody calamity. <laughs> there, look at that. Okay. So that is beautiful, smooth, guys. You can see that there's no torn grain. This is wet wood as well. There's no torn grain, no torn fibres, no no tool marks to talk about at all. Nothing. There ain't no tool marks, so I can't talk about them. No. There you go. Absolutely beautiful finish. And that, like I said, carbide. And so to get that top bit up that inside, on that top there, across that top, <laughs> detail chisel, okay? Because it has a bevel. You can ride that bevel. It's like your smallest little spindle gouge. That's what it is. Now, I mean, I don't do them a lot for do. If I was doing a lot of this and I was using carbide, I would probably buy a, a second carbide chisel for that guy that does them. <laughs> the link in the in the box There's below. A link. <laughs> and what I would do is I would actually grind that bar back quite slim there. Okay, I would I would take a lot more off that bar there. That would really allow you to get in and come round with that bevel. Um, it's like this because I say a lot of people just will just push them in flat, but that's what I would do if I was going to use these to make like things like cowboy hats or really narrow boxes, pots, whatever. I would have another detail chisel or use the one you've got if you don't use it for other stuff. And I would literally, I, I, I would take that bar back. I would probably grind that bar right down there down like that and i would come off off there that that would be plenty strong enough okay so you'd be coming through there like that i don't know because so i don't use the carbide a lot for it i would normally use a spindle gouge in all honesty for me um it's it's the tool to use for it you know that for going up inside one of those you would want a spindle gouge like that okay and that will get you right up in that top if you're going to use a cardboard what you want to do is get that on the end of that so if i put that there look that would come up exactly and i, I didn't rehearse that that's come up exactly to take. that mark where i said to take it off just there and that would get you right down inside you'd run that bevel even on sound you'd run that bevel like that and you can go right there. See, at the moment, you're going. This this bit of bar here is going to get in the way. So get rid of all that. You don't want it for strength because you're not coming in flat. You're using it for this. There's no 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 stress on it. And you can run that bevel, and you could actually come right down inside, right down to here with something like running that bevel on that. Fantastic tool. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant tool. It really is. You know. And, and as I said, shows guys, there is nothing, absolutely nothing. I haven't found anything yet. Uh, if anyone wants to come up with something that maybe I, I can't do with carbide, then mention it, put it in the comments. But I, I can't find anything that you can't do with carbide and do just as good, get just as good a finish. You wouldn't get a better finish off of any other tools with that, okay? You just wouldn't. The, the, the carbide can do it. Just present it correctly. So there you go, guys. Mm -hmm that's already moving that's not round no more <laughs> that is actually moving while i'm talking that's that's not round anymore that's actually look i can put it on there you can't see not, it no. um but that's that that's round and that was sitting on there round it's actually it's got a little gap top and bottom on there there <laughs> and there that's gonna cut that's gonna be beautiful i'll yeah. show you that when it's all all curled up yeah right that's well, it, guys. I wanted to say um, well done to Paul Westlake, who managed to make his first cowboy hat. Yes, Paul, you've done <laughs> well, mate. Try it with some wet wood if you can. Yeah. I mean, if you ain't got none, just nip over your neighbour's garden, cut a branch of their tree or something. <laughs> they won't mind. Give, let them have the, let, make a hat for them as well. They won't mind. <laughs> just go and hack a bit off of their, their tree. Yeah. Uh, and thank you, um, um, Andy. Andy, because yeah, I found, <laughs> did find out, he did actually respond. Andy... Thank you very much, mate, yep. for the, the badges. Abs absolutely love them. Absolutely love them. They're brilliant. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, let me just get that. That's it. And that, well, you've missed out on these guys now if you didn't get one. They were <laughs> Lidl's. Okay, £7.99. It was one of these ones that comes on this clip. And I just undone it from there. Okay. I had a, I got a little bit of... Um, 
metal tube that went on the end there just to extend it because it has the, the wire this wire comes out the end of it here so just ex just made that solid and that's it and that plugs in the end okay i mean <clears throat> that's your lead for it nice long lead okay that pops in the end there and that's your power for it and like i said you can put that straight down through your headstock and it turns you don't have to have big jaws like this you can use that on on any of the chucks you can use it on the smaller ones um i use this one because i've got it okay that's that's why um as i said if if you're not not worrying you can get a set then i'd, I'd definitely recommend going by a set of these jaws they're absolutely fantastic brilliant set of jaws they are but if you haven't got those and you've just got your normal jaws so lisa's like <gasps> i'm waffling now and i right but i'm just showing people if you haven't got those then you can just use your normal size jaws this isn't fussy that will go in there see look when that clamps down right look i can hold the light still and that still turns around it and then all you need you haven't got to have one as big as this you can make a, a this one i made for those jaws but you can put a smaller one on and that will work the same you know the light can come up i mean i've made this so the light actually comes up there and goes inside this actual thing so you know there's my light just in, in just there you can clamp this on your jaws exactly the same it doesn't have to be those big big jaws don't think oh well it's all right because you've got those no this is just your normal this is the standard set of jaws that come with with these chucks okay and there you go look that's and and just throw your chuck key in the bin full of sword wood shavings yeah, don't don't really <laughs> you don't need it once you put it on <laughs> right and there you go guys and that works and this is inside and staying still and there you go and you smashing my workshop up now okay. and there you go and and your hats go on there and i can do whatever size i want up to this size and then with that you can always make a bigger one that fits over this for big hats um ideally you want some of that eva foam to to you know the self-adhesive strips down there and then the hats will fit on better i keep meaning to do it and i just haven't got it just i haven't got around to doing it i haven't got any of the the stuff and I, every time i go to shops i forget to buy it mm. but if you didn't get if you haven't got one of these and you can't get one and Lidl's ain't got them no more well tough luck on you because i told you, <laughs> you when they had these it, in Lidl's, yeah. i announced it <laughs> and if you didn't take notice and buy one then that's <laughs> tough titty i'm afraid mate <laughs> there you go right <laughs> guys thank you for joining me hope that's answered any questions yes you can do it i'm like bob the builder and i can we do it yes, yes we can, we can. And I'll see you on the next one, guys. Yeah. Here we go. Toodle Pip. Bye. We've got to go look for Injuns. Injuns, yeah. They're up in them Black Hills. Bye, Toodle guys. Pip, guys. <laughs>